the beautiful stepper. Look at you. Look at you beautiful steppers out there. Oh my goodness. I feel the energy. I feel it. I can feel it in this present moment. You're just feeling beautiful. You're looking beautiful. I know you're feeling good because I'm feeling good, all right? Now, that being said, look good, feel good, feel good, look good, play better, all right? Now, what game are we playing today? Bitcoin is the game that we're playing today. Guys, Bitcoin, I want to just teach you a little bit about Bitcoin enough so that you understand what I understood about Bitcoin before I ever purchased it, right? Now, this being said, if you like to see how to purchase Bitcoin and also, you know, learn a little bit more about Bitcoin, check out this video right there, how to purchase $100 of Bitcoin through Gemini. Also teach you about Gemini. Now, that being said, guys, what is BTC? What is Bitcoin? Now, when I first heard about Bitcoin, it was about 2000 and I want to say 17, 18, 2000, somewhere in there. I had a cousin, my cousin, he, you know, talking about him buying Bitcoin. I thought it like literally went in one ear and out the other because I was so focused on how to get my first wholesale deal, right? I was so focused on that. I'm like, man, I'm not thinking about some Bitcoin, right? So this being said, once he, you know, had his Bitcoin thing and time just really progressed and I just started seeing Bitcoin more, right? So I really never had too many conversations with him about that. He was just telling me that Bitcoin was a good opportunity back then, like 2017, 2018. And I'm not sure if he kept his money in or not. But that being said, we all know what happened in about 2020 was the main, you know, catalyst for Bitcoin really going from about like, I believe 15 to like 60, 70,000, right? That was, it was just worse. Bitcoin peaked around 70,000, right? So this being said, from that time to this time, a lot has changed just due to the Bitcoin markets as well. But let's go back. What is Bitcoin? Now, skip the current events. If you're into the crypto markets, you know what's going on with the crypto markets, but that's not what we're here for. With Bitcoin itself, Bitcoin is a decentralized, really, method of payment. It's a method of currency. Now, I'm explaining it to you exactly how I understood it before I purchased it, right? So this is no research, nothing. This is how I understood it when I purchased it. I looked into it a little bit, but this is what I understood. Now, Bitcoin is a decentralized monetization, right? It came as a result of the 2008 uh, crisis, the 2008 economic crisis. So we all know what happened in 2008 with the banks and all that. So the goal of Bitcoin was to remove the central banks, the central entities from an A to B transaction. So basically, if I want to buy something from you, I should not have to go through, you know, whatever bank that I use to pay for it. I shouldn't have to go through that. I should be able to go just me to you. And also, I should be able to do this anonym anonymously, right? So I should be able to pay for things anonymously. I should not have to tell you, you know, my name and, you know, everything that you have to say when you usually purchase something online. I should just be able to pay for it. Bitcoin offered a solution to this by having a ledger system. So this ledger system, when you sign up, usually, you know, using a lot of Bitcoins, especially back in the you know, infancy of Bitcoin, you did not really have to put any private information in, right? So like now, when you buy Bitcoin through different exchanges, Coinbase, Gemini, check out the video up there. Um, but if, when you buy Bitcoin through there, you have to get, you know, your identity, your social security, all type of personal information goes into that. When a Bitcoin was originally created, that was not the case. You didn't have to give that much personal information, but there also was not any exchanges making it, you know, available to the general public. So Bitcoin back then, was a little bit more privatized, but even the same thing like stays true to this day about Bitcoin, which is the ledger system. So this is what, you know, helped me understand more about what Bitcoin was trying to offer back then. So this being said, when I heard about Bitcoin and I actually purchased it, just a little quick antidote, 2021, sometime around there, 2020, 2021, you know, who knows? But anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I purchased Bitcoin and when I purchased BTC, it was in its phase of, you know, peaking, basically. It was in the peaking phase of things. But as, you know, throughout the peaking phase and also back then, Bitcoin still kept track of all of their stuff throughout the ledger system. So anytime you actually make any type of transaction with Bitcoin, you can look on a ledger system and anybody can see that transaction. But it's still private. And I know you may be thinking, like, how is it private if anybody can see the transaction? Well, you can trace it back to the wallet that you actually made the transaction from. So it depends on where you made that transaction from and your wallet number and if that is available to the public as well. But this being said, the good part about this is that we now can, you know, Bitcoin offers a solution to basically stopping fraud activity as well because it's anonymous to enough 
but it also keeps track of where the money goes, where the Bitcoin money goes. This is what the ledger system does. So unlike, you know, the banks or anything like that, right now, you know, only the banks can really see where all the money goes. You get what I'm saying? Like the banks can see where the money goes, where with Bitcoin, anybody can look and see what's been purchased by anybody, who purchased it, who bought it. So it offers an open source solution. That's where I'm getting at. Bitcoin is an open source solution. Anybody can see, you know, where the money goes and also anybody can also take the code of Bitcoin. Take the code of Bitcoin to see if there's any, you know, um, any viruses or anything like that within the system, but also take the code of Bitcoin to build their own blockchain. And that's another thing. Bitcoin is ran on a blockchain system. Guys, I'm just talking to you, you know, I'm just talking to you how I understood it. So it's a conversation right here. So things pop up in the conversation. Don't judge me. But so with uh, with it being a blockchain, now you may be thinking about what is a blockchain, right? Uh, with the blockchain technology, basically, it, you know, everything keeps tracks on a ledger system, but also instead of like with the central entity, right? So with banks themselves, every remember the banks are, on the, are the only ones who sees the transactions with the blockchain system. All the transactions are approved through different nodes. These nodes are different computers. So anybody who runs the actual Bitcoin blockchain on their computer, they offer a node. They're a node, right? So there's not one central entity where the transaction goes through. The transaction has to go through these different nodes, right? These different blocks. So these blocks have to approve the transaction. So this being said, it makes it decentralized. It's decentralized versus central finance. For the last, you know, ages, we've had central finance, but now we're coming into the decentralized things, like time of things. Now, Bitcoin, from the time that I understood it even, has, like, crypto of itself has taken a huge shift, the trajectory of it as far as, you know, where it could possibly lead to. So you, now you have things like Web3, dApps, you know, uh, DeFi. All these other just different subcategories, you know, not mentioning NFTs or anything like, like that, but there's so many different categories that just focusing on Bitcoin, guys, is, you know, this is not financial advice, but just starting off in crypto, Bitcoin is basically gold, right? Bitcoin is gold because it doesn't offer much utilization in the real world, whereas Ethereum has smart contracts and all these other things, but Bitcoin at this present moment doesn't offer much utilization not just you know form of there is forms of payment right so some countries like you know that country right there does offer some forms of uh payment but it is a difference right it's a huge difference as far as nfts dApps smart contracts all these different things that are not really um layered onto bitcoin at this present moment so my purpose of saying this is that when you purchase bitcoin guys the idea of it is just to purchase it and kind of keep it there for the long term now faithfully to sum everything up in this video you understand about bitcoin now the basic understanding of bitcoin is that it's a decentralized means of finance means of currency right it's a decentralized way for us to make a transaction so instead of it being you know me right here s2 wanting to purchase something from you right there you know right right there literally right there so for me wanting to purchase something from you right there i would have to go through this thing right here which is the bank so i would have to use my you know card or whatever it is if i'm not paying cash i would have to go right through and purchase it from you versus with bitcoin we take that person out the way i come up real close and personal and i just you know what i'm saying give you the actual means of transaction but it is a digital currency and there are other things like wallets and all type of things like that if you'd like to understand more about you know new currency digital currency go ahead and check out the playlist right here or right there wherever it is but check out that playlist and also check out the cards that i mentioned in the description guys with everything now as far as it being a decentralized means of finance, that's the basic understanding of Bitcoin. But the reason it's decentralized is what I said, is different nodes that approve the transaction. There's not one person that approves the transaction. And also one disclaimer, nobody knows the future of Bitcoin, right? So, you know, just keep that in mind. Nobody really knows. At that, <laughs> so so the, if you like to learn my 2022 crypto strategy, you can check that out in the new currency playlist as well, all right? Nobody knows though, just keep that in mind. Disclaimer, and also this was not financial advice. With that being said, Stepper, um, I mean, I think we covered everything. I think we're good here. Yeah, we're good enough. Until next time, as always, get to stepping.